Good day. Thanks for taking a look at my video. Today we're going to talk about the second part of our two-part series here on how to download the latest version of Ubuntu and uh, install it on a or create a USB bootable device that you can install or even use it from. Now the version of Ubuntu that we're downloading is the uh, Ubuntu 11.10 Onric which is the latest version as you can see clearly on our download page and we're downloading the 32-bit version which we've already done um, which if you saw our previous video in this set uh, that would be you would have saw how we did that um, again we could use other versions there's is not specific to this particular version but since this is probably the most popular version that most people will use or download uh, this is the one that we're selecting um, so step one here we did in our last video so we're not going to repeat anything on that today but we're going to go down to the second step which is to burn your CD or create a USB stick and the lovely thing is is this page here tells us uh, and gives us some pretty good instructions on how to do it so for instance we just say I would like to create a U USB stick, so we click on USB stick. To create it, I will be using, whether you're using a Windows or a Mac or Ubuntu. In our case, we're going to be using Ubuntu. And then, and then we just click on the icon that says, show me how. And then here it walks you through this. Now, the lovely thing about this is it shows you this from uh, the Unity-based interface, which was uh, introduced in 11.04. Um, we do not have this but it's the same process and the same tools. Uh, there is absolutely no difference between the startup disk creator that's used uh, on Ubuntu 11.04 versus the one that we're going to be using on 10.04. They're uh, virtually identical. So it walks you through the whole process here, but we're going to do this for you just so that you can have a, you can see what's going on here. So first thing we're going to do, we'll minimize this window here, um, and then what we're going to do is go to Applications, and then we're going to scroll down to where I don't think it was in here. Actually, I think it was over here. There we go. Sorry, um, Administration System, Administration and then we go to startup disk creator alright now once it does this it'll take a few seconds for it to come up then it's going to come up and say uh, do you want to go ahead and uh, download the image now as you can see we've got the file here already so the lovely thing about this is is that we can simply just go ahead and it's already detected the CD image that we're going to use what it does not see is the device that we're going to use. So in this point we're going to plug in our USB drive into a USB port on our computer and that'll just take a few seconds here as that gets installed. Now once we plug it in we should see we have a little LED on it to activate and once we do that we can see now it has detected the device and it tells us that it's a 1.9 gigabyte device and there's 1.2 gigabytes of free space. And the reason for this is because this is the same device that we use continuously. We just upgrade this with the latest version. So before I begin, I'm going to erase the disk, make sure it's all clear. Go ahead and do that. Now, an authentication window is going to pop up here that says, oh, it's, wants me, it's preventing me from formatting the device. So if I want to go ahead with this, I must enter my password and click authenticate. <clears throat> Once I've done that, it is now going through the process of formatting that device. Um, well, more specifically, erasing it and there we go we're done and once it's done it'll mount the file system again for us and open a folder to the file system which we can close because we really don't need it so once we've got it here you can see we've it shows us now we've got a full 1.9 gigabytes of free space so let's click on the device this is the partition let's click on the device itself okay and select our CD image and for some reason it's not allowing us to activate uh, the reserve space for storage. Not that we're going to use it anyway. Uh, if you've followed some of my other videos in the past you know that I don't um, actually keep anything uh, of my data on the device itself. Um, even though there's lots of free space, I mean, I'm only going to use about 700 megabytes out of 1.9 gigabytes. 
you know, as you can see, it's going to leave me about 1.2 gigabytes of free space. So you could technically use that if you wanted to, but in my case, I particularly choose not to. So once we've done this, we've selected <coughs> our CD drive image, we've selected our file system, then we can click on Make Startup Disk. Again, it's going to ask us to go through the authentication process because it's going to prevent us from mounting the device. We want to allow this, and so we enter our password and click Authenticate. Now it's saying, oh, it's preventing to install a bootloader. First thing it's going to do on the device because the device will actually be able to boot. We're going to allow this and authenticate it. So there we go. Once we're done, as you can see, it is now going through the process of copying the files. This will take quite a bit of time, so be patient with it. Let it continue. Uh, you know, go have coffee, go for you know something to eat, whatever you want to do. Um, do something else. And once this is complete, you will then have a USB drive that you can install from. So as you can see, it's a fairly very simple process. There's nothing to it. Um, one of the things I'm going to try and determine here, as I've just learned, is for it's not allowing us to do the extra storage. Now I don't know whether that's just uh, uh, has uh, some limitation here today or if my computer is being goofy or if it's actually been disabled uh, in the newest version of that uh, startup disk creator tool. In any event that's all there is to it <coughs> we'll let this continue on its own it should be done in a few minutes as you can see here there's really not that much to it um, and then you can now reboot your PC with this plugged into the USB port and provide your BIOS can recognize it. You may have to encourage your system to boot from the device uh, depending on how it is set up. Many people have their computer set up to either boot straight from a hard disk or to boot from a CD-ROM and then a hard disk. Today's computers typically will also allow you to, you know, select a USB device to, to boot from. Then maybe, you know, so you can set the boot order or boot priority as it's called to, to your heart's content. Um, but I, like I say, as you can see, it's not a hugely lengthy process. It doesn't take a long, long period of time to go ahead and do this. And then, like I say, once it's done, it's you now have a usable boot device.